I suppose one of the most common questions we are asked during Lent is, well, what are you giving up for Lent? And the trite answer, of course, is, well, I'm giving up sweets or I'm giving up alcohol or I'm giving up cigarettes or television or whatever. Trivial things, trivial things, as I tried to explain in, in my last talk. But I wonder if you've ever felt like saying, I'm just giving up. I'm so fed up. I'm giving up. That's a kind of a reflection, if you like, of a sort of apathy or perhaps being overburdened, not least over the last two years that we've had. We've run out of energy, uh, difficult to maintain uh, uh, an enthusiasm, if you like, when we're cut off from each other and when we've been so restricted in our movements, not least because of the COVID uh, epidemic. Giving up is what the Pharisees said to Jesus. Give up this ministry of yours. Just give it up. You're going the wrong way. It's going to get you into trouble. Herod encouraged Jesus to give up because he did not want his kingdom to be undermined by another latter-day prophet. The people are against you. Just Give up your mission. You look, people uh, have turned against you. Yes, you've got your followers, but on the whole, even your own people in Nazareth wanted to throw you off the mountaintop when you dared to say, uh, reading from the prophet Isaiah, this text has been fulfilled today, even as you listen. They didn't want to hear, despite their whole history of what we call Old Testament prophecy. So Jesus had many reasons to give up, just as perhaps you and I feel at times, why bother? Why should I? Nobody else does it. Nobody will know. What difference does it make? So I'm not giving up sweets or alcohol or television. I'm just giving up. I want to be apathetic. I can't be bothered. On a wider scale, of course, that giving up is reflected in the millions, the millions of refugees and victims of war, which we see every day on our television screens. Has the world given up on them? I wonder if we have. Have they been betrayed by the lack of responsible communication between our leaders? Have they been deprived by we in the West who are consumers of the majority of the world's goods? Global warming, the ecological crisis, why should I be deprived of my creature comforts, despite the fact that I know that two-thirds of the world is suffering deprivation because of the selfishness of the so-called first world, less than one-third of human... So, so giving up, I think it's a very powerful examination of conscience for all of us as individuals, as communities, as members of the church, followers of Jesus Christ, and of course, as members of the national and international community. What am I prepared to do without in order, as uh, uh, Mother Teresa once said, live simply so that others may simply live? And I come back then, you see, to our Lenten penance. These are not just uh, trivial things. These are outward signs of inner conversion transformation. Having said all that, the reality is that Jesus will give up, but not in the way that the people of his own time or perhaps we ourselves, expect. Jesus will give up 
himself. He will empty himself in order to be filled with the power and the purpose of God. And do you remember when I was speaking about going out into the desert? This was part and parcel of this self-emptying in order to be filled up with the power of the Spirit in order to fulfill his messianic call. Jesus will give himself up. He'll travel to Jerusalem. He'll follow the way of the cross. He will confront the forces of evil, unjust persecution, innocent suffering. This innocent man carrying on his shoulders the sinfulness of the world. I'm always struck by the fact that Judas Iscariot takes his own life. Jesus gives his life in freedom and self-sacrificing love. In the last two years, I'm sure many of us have felt like giving up. Odds are against us. The medical crises, the shortage of resources for the National Health Service, the isolation of elderly people, children not being able to fulfill their educational potential. And then, as I said earlier on, the trauma of the refugee suffering from homelessness, alienation, torn out of their own country. We are called back again and again during Lent to say that these things are not out there. They're not separate from us. We are part and parcel of the reality. If we are not part of the solution, then we are part of the problem. And the simple exercises of penance, deprivation, prayer and fasting, these are not just exercises in superficial things, not trivial things. These are outward signs of inner reality, turning back, conversion, following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we do need to give up on those things that drain us of emotional, psychological, and spiritual energy. The bad habits, the compulsive behavior, the judgmental attitudes, all the things which we think are ours by right and nobody has the right to tell me otherwise. Lent is a season of reconciliation, of forgiveness, and of recognizing that in this thought, word, action, there is a sinful dimension which needs to be addressed. Otherwise, I'm living life on the surface. So the examination of conscience, which is part of the Lenten penitential exercise, not a superficial thing, but something which goes to the very core of our being. Conversion, repentance, newness of life, these things are not comfortable options. They are a recognition that I am not living my life in the way that I could and I should. Selfishness, pride, sinfulness, we may not use those words, but they are at the heart, if you like, of so much of the tension which lies within us and certainly the tension which lies between people and communities. And so this Lenten season is a time for us to hold a mirror up to ourselves and to look and see ourselves as God sees us. 
I'm often comforted by uh, the, 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 the words which say that the final judgment is nothing more or less than me whispering into the ear of God those things I could never tell another person about myself. Perhaps I couldn't even tell myself. This season of Lent is an opportunity to see myself as God sees me, as a person of infinite value, of infinite worth, even if I don't recognize it myself, a person infinitely forgivable to the degree that he gave his only son as a model and a means whereby I might come into union with him. And in the celebration of Lent, of the Easter mysteries, I recognize that there is a richness of life in union with Jesus Christ, which is there to be embraced and to be nurtured by and to be celebrated not just on Easter Sunday, but on every Sunday and every day of my life.